Should you work harder? Is hard work the key? Is hustle the key? I hear a lot of different opinions. I just want to say this. I feel like I live in a world that's the exact opposite. I feel like I live in a world where millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, even billions of people are working their ass off. I remember going to India in the third world. People wake up at dawn and work till dusk picking uh, aluminum out of trash heaps. Should they work harder to get ahead? I'll tell you a true story. Growing up, I played basketball at a school, inner city, 95% non-white people in Raleigh, North Carolina. Enlo is the name of the university. And I had a friend who lived in the projects. His name was Leon Champion. Rest in peace, Leon. He died in prison after I got graduated high school. But it's a sad story. I never, you know, I didn't grow up rich, but we always had food. And I spent the night at his house in the projects one time. And Leon, I woke up in the middle of the night and I was hungry. You know, I was, I was probably 17 years old, hungry. I go down to his refrigerator, everybody's asleep. I open it up, he had a single mom. And I'll never forget, there was mustard and beer in the kitchen. One beer, one mustard. I said to him, I came back in the morning, I said, Leon, where's the food? He said, man, I don't eat on the weekends. We don't have any money. I eat free lunch as late as I can on Friday, and then I go to school at six in the morning to eat on Monday. Sure, he had a little bit of candy and a little bit of that on the weekend. Wage inequality. His mom was working nonstop. I never even saw his mom. She was at a job every minute. I, I, I don't even know when she came in to sleep. So don't tell me I should have just gone to her and said to Leon's mom, oh, work harder, work harder, work harder, hustle. Hey, you ain't hustling. No, someone should have educated her. Some entrepreneur should have reached down from their multi-million dollar empire and said, take, let me take you under my wing. You know, a, a guy came to me, a homeless kid. His name is Chris Lopez. I put some videos. This was about uh, two years ago. Showed up, knocked on my door at my Hollywood Hills house. He said, Ty, everybody's dead in my family except my grandfather. I'm homeless. I walked from Compton, Long Beach. He walked to Hollywood. I said, how long did it take? I think he said seven hours. So I think he took the bus a little bit. He said, will you help me, Ty? And I didn't know this guy. I didn't know if he had a criminal record. I didn't know whatever. But I thought, this dude's a hustler. He showed up. He found, I said, how'd you find my house? He said, I triangulated. This is before Snapchat. Triangulated it. I walked for hours up here in the hills, and I finally found it. So I took him under my wing, and he worked for me. I told him at first, I'm just going to hire you for a little while. I'm, this is not a long-term thing, you know. I want to test you, see if you fit in. And he worked for me for about one and a half years, one year. And finally, I came to the end. I said, I've taught you a lot of stuff. You've saved a lot of money working for me. So he had saved up enough to get a motorcycle and, and uh, have money in the bank. He was taking care of his grandfather. who was like 80 or 90. They were no longer homeless. And it's not me bragging. I'm just showing you what leverage can do when you reach out and help people, all you entrepreneurs. And Chris Lopez kind of disappeared. All right, it was the last day, we sent him off. Thanks for being here. About six months ago, I was in the Las Vegas airport. Who comes around the corner when I get out of the airport? Just walking by, Chris Lopez. He came up to me, I recorded a video, I've released it a long time ago, he said, Chris, I mean, he said, Ty, you know, man, I wanna thank you. You showed me how to do real estate, give me some just general financial tips. He was a Mexican, he was Mexican. He said, I went down with, where my grandfather's hometown in Mexico and we built a condominium building can't remember how big it was, multi-unit. And he said, that thing pays me six or 700 bucks a month profit now. That takes care of my grandpa here in Long Beach, Compton. He said, I now, uh, I found a job. He's, he's got all these entrepreneurial jobs. He's up in Alaska doing some fishing for a couple months. He's doing all, he said, man, I'm financially independent. I think he told me he's making four to six grand a month. Now that's not a million dollars, but if you left that kid in the ghetto and just said, work harder, work harder, you know what happened to my friend Leon Champion, the other friend I was talking about? Nobody helped him. I was only 17. I didn't know how to help him. My, gra my dad, we had a little bit of money. My stepdad, very nice thing he did when I told him, man, I was just at Leon's house. He had no food. We went and bought a, a week's worth of groceries. That's all we could afford. And we brought it to Leon. But it wasn't enough. His mom continued to work hard. Didn't work. I remember as a senior in high school, Leon, I stopped hanging out with him. He started carrying a gun at school. It was a, he started dealing coke. And I was an athlete. I didn't want to get involved in that. We were acquaintances. But he was forced to because he was hungry, not because he was a criminal. He was a good kid. I left. I went to Joel Salatin's farm. When I came back, first thing I did, I called my friend Lance. I said, Lance, let's catch up and play basketball with Leon. He said, oh, you don't know? Leon's dead. So what happened? He said, man, he got caught. 
for selling drugs. He got put in prison and Leon was diabetic. All that bad diet stuff, not being able to eat, had made him a diabetic as a teenager. I remember that. He used to have insulin shots. He said they put him in prison and I don't think they gave him his insulin shots and he just died. They just left him. He rotted in there at 20, 21 years old. So that's the world where you just tell the mom to work harder and hustle. Don't give me that fucking shit. It pisses me off. Go out and teach people how to do stuff. That's how you move the world forward. Enough of this nonsense. By the way, a little PS. I never saw Leon's mom because she drove a taxi, did all this. But in his senior year, she's the one who gave him a gun. They both started dealing. She said, forget this, we're hungry. What I wish would have happened is one of these entrepreneurs, just talking about hustle, just talking about hard work. How about hard work go help people? And a lot of you are. I'm not calling out anyone in particular. I'm just saying, don't preach at people that need to work hard. If she would have come across one of these videos, she would have thought, oh my God, I just got to work hard. Nah, that's not what she needed. She needed guidance. We live in a modern world. She could have, she could have, just like Chris Lopez, if I had been older, I could have taken her and Leon under my wing and said, let me show you how to make four to six grand a month. Just like Chris Lopez. I know single moms, my mom was a single mom, all around us. Family, single moms, people trying to put food on their table, working two, three jobs. Is the answer for them to just work harder or is it to work smarter? Work hard or work smart, because they're different. I'm always reminded of this uh, story that my mentor, Alan Nation, told me. He said, Ty, and I don't know if this is a true story, but it gets the point across. There was a plane flying over South America. It crash landed and it was full of all these engineers, all these hard workers. And the hard workers got out and there were some machetes and they all grabbed a machete and they began to hack their way through the jungle. Chop, 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 chop. Flurries of activity, boy. They were working hard, but they forgot something. Don't ever confuse flurries of activity with accomplishment. Activity doesn't always equal achievement. So they were chopping through. And luckily for them, one person got out of the plane. Instead of working hard, went on, climbed up a big tree and looked out and surveyed the landscape and yelled down to the group and said, hey guys, you're working hard, but you're going the wrong direction. You're going deeper into the jungle. The city for our escape is the other way. You see, what's moved civilization forward is not just hard work. Go to any hotel, go to any restaurant. The hardest working people there are working their ass off and they're still not getting ahead. There's still not equality in pay. There's still people making massive amounts who don't work nearly as hard as the working class. No, what gets you ahead is leverage. In fact, it's the exact opposite. What you want to do is how to figure out how to work half the time and get twice as much done so that you could take a vacation, so that you can paint a painting and have time, some downtime, so you can go on vacation with your family, so you can just lay out on the beach and just look at nature and enjoy life. You want to just grind yourself into the ground? Go ahead. But the people that get ahead are not just grinders. They're not. The grind is necessary, work is necessary, but it's never a goal. It's a necessity. The goal is very different. The goal of life is not to breathe. Breathing is a necessity. The goal of life is to enjoy your life, to do something important. You breathe because you must. You work because you must. But you never say, well, you know, what I, you know why I'm here is just to breathe? No. You're not here just to work. Working harder doesn't always change the game. Now, I will say, there's about 5 to 10% of people I bumped in, bump into that are just pure lazy. You and I all know who they are. They're just lazy. But those people are not going to be helped by this video or anybody's video. If they're lazy, they're lazy. For those of you, and if you're watching this, I doubt you're lazy. I bet you you work. I bet you you know how to put your head down and focus. But maybe you look at your bank account and go, wait a second, this is crazy. Did you know that I think the top 10 people on the Forbes list have more money than the next 50% of the world? Is it because those top 10 Forbes list people worked harder? Nah, let's, let's be real here. Is it because they grinded more than the other 50% of the world? I think the people saying this haven't traveled the world. I've been to over 50 countries, a lot of them third world countries, the hardest working people I've ever met, and they're still poor, and it's sad. And I'd like to figure a way to change that. I'd like to be able to contribute. My best guess and my best hope for the world is that we begin to have tools. We begin to get electricity to places. We get the internet to places. We get better education. That's not just working hard, that's working smart. This will change the world. Now. I just want to go on record saying, I have worked hard. I have. And I regret a lot of it. I regret of a lot of it. In hindsight, had I listened to more people, and I had mentors. 
But even then, I wasn't listening enough. When you get in a car in a new city, do you just drive? Or do you look at Waze? Do you look at Google Maps? Do you look at Apple Maps? Because it'll tell you, don't go left. We've already looked down left, and left is a dead end. Left is traffic. Same way for you as an entrepreneur. You need somebody, just like Mark Zuckerberg, turned to Steve Jobs and said, I don't know what to do with Facebook. It's not, it's not working anymore. And Steve Jobs said, Mark, you're in your 20s. I'm almost 50. Let me share with you the mistakes I made in my 20s, in my 30s. Let me guide you so you don't have to make those mistakes. As the great Warren Buffett says, once the richest man in the world, we only learn through mistakes, but they don't have to be ours. We only learn through hard work, but it doesn't have to all be our hard work. Who do you think gets further in life? Who do you think gets to the point A to point B faster? Somebody who runs real fast, really fast, Usain Bolt. He can run 28 miles an hour, I think. Or an out of shape person who has a car. One has a tool, one works hard. Who would you bet on in a fight? Somebody with a stick or somebody with a gun? Who would you want defending you? One might be really strong with really big muscles. It'll be like that Indiana Jones movie. The guy had the sword, and Indiana Jones watched the guy do all the sword stuff, and then he just went, boop, because he had a tool. What's your gun? And I'm not talking about literally guns. I'm saying, what's your tool? What's going to get you ahead? What's helped me? I'm probably not smarter than you. I probably didn't work harder than you. I found some mentors in the, when the internet first came out, and they showed me how to use Google Ads. I sat in a little room in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I reached the entire United States from a little interface. It helped me go from zero to six figures. How do you explain that? Was I working harder than you? I don't think so. I was working smarter than some people, but it wasn't even my smarts. I can't even take the credit. I was taking the smarts from a guy named Corey Rudel. Joel Salatin helped me. Gary Townsend helped me. Alan Nation helped me. Joel, uh, Joel Salatin at age 19 changed my life. Most important people in my life were not the ones who made me work harder, although Joel did expect hard work. But boy, it was also smart work. If you just worked hard and did a flurry of activity and he came in there and it was all falling apart, he wouldn't congratulate me for my hard work. You, your bank account doesn't go up from hard work. There's no rule that you work double the hours tomorrow and you make double the money, especially not as an entrepreneur. If I could go back and be uh, 19 again, I would watch this video and test it. And I go, how can I work smarter? How can I take and download into my brain through books, mentorships, conferences, YouTube videos, the accumulated body of knowledge of the wisest people in the world. Give me that. I'm gonna tell you, I challenge anybody. You wanna try to outwork me and I do that? You can, out, you can, you can out leverage everybody. Was it Archimedes, I think, who said, give me a lever long enough and I'll move the world. We can change the world. We can create wage equality or at least much a uh, closer sort. There will always be some wage inequality, but it doesn't have to be that the top 10 people have more money than the bottom 50%. Those top 10 people, even if they work 24 hours a day, can only work 240 hours a day, but three and a half billion people are working hundreds of billions of hours a month, but they're not getting ahead. It's a sad world. It will be education, it will be technology, it will be mentors, this is what will move the world forward. I'm not talking about personal wealth for me or personal wealth for you, even though that will be included. I'm talking about wealth for the world. I'm talking about a world where you can walk down the streets and it, no one's shooting at every, anybody because everybody has enough. The only people who shoot at people are people who don't have enough for the most part. There's a few psychopaths. Almost all crime is rooted in not having enough.